Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're gonna to look at what the IT help desk slash service desk do. So they can be called help desk or service desk, really depends on the company. And we're gonna go through that right after this. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and through my years of uh, my career, through my years of experience, I've worked across many aspects of the IT industry, including starting off within a help desk slash service desk position, and now moving into a position where I'm looking after you know, many teams of IT help desk and service desk technicians, engineers, administrators, etc. So what do they do? Essentially what they are is they are the first level of support for a business. Right, so if you have a problem, if you work in an enterprise, if you work in a company, in a small company, medium, large company, uh, there, there's a chance that you'll have some form of IT person working um, at your company. And generally the first level, let's say the first level of support, I have an issue with my computer, would go to someone like a help desk or service desk person. Really depends on the business. A small company, may not even have a group of IT people, right? They may only have one IT person that does everything. They're gonna do the help desk stuff, as well as things that are a bit more complicated. But in the larger, medium larger company, you'll have um, what's called a three level IT um, sort of structure in terms of your support model. You'll have your IT help desk, your service desk, then you'll have more of a support slash desktop support, support analyst type of responsibility and role. And then you have more your level threes, which fall into your system and admins, your system engineers, your network guys, uh, et cetera. So then more your advanced people. So really in a, in a medium large business, you're gonna to go to your help desk in the first instance. Um, they're gonna do things such as, um, you know, resetting passwords, going in and creating accounts. You know, in, in a lot of companies, there's technology uh, by Microsoft called Active Directory, which is what manages all of your accounts and your passwords and, you know, folders and groups for your, you know, for your staff members, etc. So they may be responsible to go in and actually, you know, make changes to that, add new users as they come into the company, delete users as they come out of the company, reset passwords, things of that nature. They're really gonna provide overall technical assistance for queries for staff, uh, for members in a company um, in the first level, right? They're gonna help with basic IT computer troubleshooting. If there's a problem with your computer, they're gonna be the first people that you speak to to try to diagnose what has happened. So they need to have some form of IT experience um, even if it's very basic, they should be able to know how to diagnose a problem with a computer. Have you tried turning it on and off again? Have you tried doing this? Have you tried doing that? Oh, let, let me log in and I can see if I can play around with your computer and try to remove any you know, malicious software, if you've got a virus, those sort of things. So they're really gonna be the first level of um, escalation for anything IT related. So this person will be responsible for answering phones, right? They may be getting phone calls from customers, from users. Uh, they may be getting emails from customers, from users, personally to their email, or perhaps to a distribution group, you know, to a group of um, service desk people. And then they're responsible for answering that call and um, you know, trying to diagnose the problem. They need to be able to then either fix the problem, or if it's beyond their measure, if beyond their skill set, they need to then be able to escalate it up to perhaps the level two desktop people, support people, or even to the level three, which are your engineers. In a lot of companies, there is also ticketing systems in place, such as a you know a support ticketing system following an ITIL sort of procedure. Um, essentially, tickets are, are logged into a customer into a you know customer portal, for example, uh, perhaps via an email or via you know a ticketing method that you can you can go via a web portal. They can then put in their query, you know, I need some new software, uh, it'll then create a ticket, and then the help desk people essentially go through all of the tickets that are assigned to them, uh, assigned to the group, and just go through the methodology, you know, um, in a method, right? And, you know, can essentially de uh, determine which ones are more important, which ones are more critical, and then go and fix or assist in those particular areas. They may also be responsible for installing software. So if you need a new version of you know, Google Chrome or a new version of Microsoft Office or something like that, 
they may be the people who actually are responsible for going and installing that software. Now, a lot of help desk, service desk people may have remote access tools where they can do that from their desks. They can be on their desks, perhaps on the phone to you, um, and they can be literally communicating into your computer remotely and can install software remotely, right? They can actually log in and push the software out to your computer, or they can guide you on how to download that software from a file server, for example, from an application server, for example. Um, alternatively, they may also go out to your desk and physically install some software for you if that is required. They may also be required to just maintain the general health of computer systems. So generally a help desk person won't get involved in the infrastructure um, technology such as servers and network switches and routers. They may, but not in every case. So they may be responsible for just maintaining the desktop and laptop fleet of PCs, Macs um, that are out in, a, in, a, in an office, for example. They may be required for patching, making sure that they've got the latest Windows or the latest Mac um, you know, patch your security fixes, those sort of things to make sure that it's nice and healthy. They could be responsible for making sure that the antivirus is scheduled and is running. So they are responsible, as I said before, for fixing computer problems. They may go out and try to diagnose a problem that's happened with somebody's computer, and they need to be able to be analytical enough and smart enough to be able to determine you know, what needs to be done. You know, if they can't fix a problem, do they need to reinstall some software? Do they need to perhaps even reinstall the operating system if the operating system is, got, you know, is buggy or there's something strange going on? If it's having problem communicating to the network, I mentioned before Active Directory, if you can't communicate out to the network, maybe they have to reconnect it to the network and get it talking to the network again, talking to Active Directory, maybe talking to a server that gives it an IP address, those sort of things. So they need to be able to diagnose very, very basically what is going on. Why is this computer having a problem? So I'd also like them to be able to go out and reinstall an operating system. If they, if they have a problem uh, with, a, with a computer, they should be able to know how to install a new version of Windows 10, for example. You know, remove the old one, reinstall the new one. Assist that person, assist the customer, assist the user out in the fleet on how to copy their data, you know, maybe to another location so that it's saved elsewhere so that they can then go and format the computer and reinstall everything and then help that user to copy all the data back. You know, it's not essential in every single help desk service desk role, but having some sort of experience to be able to open up a computer and diagnose basic issues is also, is also good. Um, yes, sometimes the level two, which is your desktop person or your you know, support analyst may do these sort of things, but even a help desk person could help out by opening up a PC that maybe needs some more RAM, for example. So if, a, if a user logs a ticket, they can be able to put more RAM into a computer also. So they're really the basic skills. I mean, overall, the, the most important thing is that the, uh, the person who's a help desk or service desk person needs to be a people person. They need to be somebody who is, is, uh, is likable, somebody that can help the customer and doesn't uh, tell the customer what to do, but works with the customer on helping them solve that problem. So they really have to have a good customer focus, um, customer satisfaction you know, for, for our customer, for our user, for our, work, you know, for our work colleague. I really want somebody in that position to be uh, to be liked by, I guess, the individuals, the, the company as a whole, because essentially you're the first point of contact. You know, if, if you are grumpy, if you don't want to help them, it's not going to help anybody. So really being customer focused, being there to help them and having that desire to help them um, is one of the essential skills of a help desk, service desk person. So there you have it. That is really in a nutshell what a service desk, help desk person does. Uh, I would think that a help desk person can really be that first point of contact, customer focused, and have a good enough IT knowledge to be able to assist the customer in the very first instance. And then of course have that desire to be able to get as much uh, information as possible, have a good learning attitude to then be able to progress up into a level two and then into a level three position. So that is my video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I'd love it if you commented below. Let me know what you think. Uh, it does help me to grow my channel and I'm more than happy to comment and to reply to your comments as well. And please like my video and subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, for a whole bunch of more videos. We'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, just on the button there for more videos.